so easily you're the god who turns things around in the so marvelous way so we just want to give you thanks give you praise and adore you for everything you do everything you have done everything you ought to do so father please come and turn things around again as we say yes and we want to come with you hallelujah hallelujah Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I remember, I remember once you told, you told me, me leave your, your country, leave your, your people, people, and, and leave your father's, father's house. house. Hallelujah. But if you took the land, it would be a great nation. nation. And, and I will, I will bless, bless you. you. And when you be a blessing to me, I remember once you told me leave your country. But I do remember that day. Leave your people. Leave your mother's house. Hallelujah. I think you to the land and you be a great nation. And I will bless you. And when you be a blessing to me, it doesn't matter what I need. Doesn't matter who I was, doesn't matter what I need, it's for you, doesn't 
God, you come back, you shall say yes. Thank you, Father. Welcome, 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 Reverend Paulette. Welcome, friends. Welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome to this all the second watch of our, you know, Sabbath. Let's say like that Sabbath time from Friday to Saturday. Father, we give you all the glory. We give you the praise. Father, as I was telling you earlier, let me be smaller. Father, Give me that small, smallness so that I can just, so that you may be seen, you may increase, let me decrease. Father, help me decrease more, 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 and more. And during this teaching, speak like you want to speak, talk like you want to talk. Thank you for your presence. We cover this with your blood and we cover this connection with your blood too. Thank you for your presence, for your might hand. In the name of Jesus Christ, we've prayed. Amen. All right. Hi, 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 hi. So, as you may have seen the title, the title for today is God has turned it around for my good, my enemies forgiven. When you see that, you may ask yourself, what is that he's going to talk about? How can God turn things around and my enemies are forgiven? Why? What is the link? What's the hint behind it? 
What's going on? Well, we're going to get into that subject today. Amen. So we all heard that, that, um, that uh, expression or that verse, if you want, because in some versions it's written like that, that says God has turned things around for my good. Whatever the enemy meant for evil, God has turned it for my good. But usually it's just an expression that is coming from a specific part of the Bible. Genesis 50, verse 20. So we're going to read that first because it's not so long. We're just going to read it. I'm going to read it first. It says this. Joseph threw himself upon his father and wept over him and kissed him. Remember, Jacob just died. So, J so Joseph was really touched. J Jacob died. And before that, he said some things. And we're going to see it later too. Then Joseph directed the physicians in his service to embalm his father, Israel. So the physicians embalmed him taking a full 40 days, for that was the time required for embalming. And the Egyptians mourned for him 70 days. When the days of mourning had passed, Joseph said to Pharaoh, to Pharaoh's court, if I have found favor in your eyes, speak to Pharaoh for me. Tell him, my father made me swear and out and say, I am about to die. Bury me in the tomb I dug for myself in the land of Canaan. Now let me go up and bury my father. Then I will return. Pharaoh said, Pharaoh said, go up and bury your father as he has made you swear. Uh, as he made you swear to do. Sorry. So Joseph went up to bury his father. All Pharaoh's officials all Pharaoh's officials accompanied him, the dignitaries of his court and all the dignitaries of Egypt, beside all the members of Joseph's household and his brothers and those belonging to his father's household. All of them went to bury Israel, Jacob, named Israel by God. Only their children and their flocks and herds were left in Goshen. Hallelujah. Chariots and horsemen also went up with him. It was a very large company. When they reached the threshing floor of Atar, near the Jordan, they lamented loudly and bitterly. And there Joseph observed a seven-day period of mourning for his father. When the Canaanites who lived there saw the mourning at the threshing floor of Atar, they said, the Egyptians are holding a solemn ceremony of mourning. That is why that place near the Jordan is called Abel Misraim. Verse 12. So Jacob's son did as he had commanded them. 13. They carried him to the land of Canaan and buried him in the cave in the film of Machpelah near Mamre, with Abraham, which Abraham had brought as a burial, as a burial place from Ephron, the Hittier, the Hittite along with the field. Verse 14, after burying his father, Joseph returned to Egypt together with his brothers and all the others who had gone with him to bury his father. Verse 15, it says, when Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, this is a very important part, pay attention to it. They say, what if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back for all the wrong we did to him? Funny enough, I was in the meeting, in meeting today, we talked about anger and grudge. So it's going to help too. Verse 16. So they sent word to Joseph saying, your father left these instructions before he died. This is what you are to say to Joseph. I ask you to forgive your brothers the sins and the wrongs they committed in treating you so bad. Now, please forgive the sins of the, of the servants of God, of your father, the servants of the God of your father. Then he says, when their message came, when their message came to him, Joseph wept. So when he heard what his father had said, he started to cry. Verse 18, his brothers then came and threw themselves down before him. Wow. Remember the, the dream that he had where he saw the, the, 
I don't remember exactly the name of it, but he saw, I think he starts bow, bowing to his star and he went to tell them. That's kind of what is happening now, but in the physical realm. And his brothers told him as they were buying in front of him, they say, we are, we are your slaves. But Joseph said to them, don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me. And this is where that verse that we always say, what the enemy meant for evil, God has turned it around for my good. Where the root is, is here. Genesis 50 verse 20, it says, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what it is now being done. The saving of many lives. Don't you see that there's a difference in between what we usually hear and what is written in the Bible? That even shocked me a little bit. I repeat, verse 20 says, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So then, don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And, I will, and he reassured them. Another version will say, comfort them and spoke kindly to them. Another version will say, spoke nicely, spoke gently. Spoke with, with love. Spoke with kindness. Verse 22 will say, Joseph stayed in Egypt along with all his father's family. He lived 110 years. Hallelujah. Wow. Glory to God for his life. And so the third generation of Ephraim's children, also the children of Machir, son of Manasseh, were placed at birth on Joseph's knees. And I'm sure if we look a little later, those children became very, very prosperous. I don't know really, but I, I'm, I'm thinking that they, they may have become, be, be, became prosperous. Verse 24, then Joseph said to his brothers, I'm about to die, but God will surely come to your aid and take you up out of this land to the land he promised on out to on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Joseph made the sons of Israel swear in an oath and say, welcome, my master. God will surely come to your aid, and then you must carry my bones up from this place. Joseph died at the age of 110 years old. And after they embalmed him, he was placed in a coffin in Egypt. That's another thing interesting. He said, take my bones away from this place. But how come he was in, how come he was embalmed and buried in Egypt? But that's another matter, another subject for another day. So welcome, my master. We are in Genesis chapter 50, Genesis chapter 50. So okay. this picture is a famous one that has been neglected and I will even say contracted because. The way we say it sometimes changed the sense and the meaning of it. This verse is now used to reassure ourselves when we go through tough situations, God turn, we're turning around for me. What the enemy meant for evil, God, will turn, God has turned it around. It's used to reassure us when we're going through tough situations. But we forget about the, the essence of the scripture, that is Genesis uh, chapter 50, verse 20. That says, as we read earlier, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done. The saving of many lives. Amen. Another version that I like say, but as for you, you meant evil against me. But God, that's, that's the uh, New King James Version. But God meant it for good. In order to bring it about as it is today, at this, as it is this day to save many people alive. So, contrary to what we usually see and what we usually hear, this verse was not meant for vengeance nor reassurance of heart only. Yes, it wasn't. It wasn't meant when th that when people would do something wrong to us, we just say that. It wasn't like that. That verse was not meant for that. That verse at the beginning was meant for forgiveness. As written in the Bible, it's meant for forgiveness. Let's, um, how, well, 
How will you understand that? Let's reestablish a little bit the context of it. Amen. So let's go back to the context, the context a little bit. So Joseph, when he was younger, uh, had been sold as a slave by his brothers. His dad, Jacob, or Israel as God renamed him, was is he was very sad when that when Jacob went missing because he had a strong relationship with his son. Remember, he gave him a, a mantle, a tunic. And remember how Jake, how Joseph was always happy to go and tell his, his father his dreams. His father his dreams. So he, but he was told that, Jason, that Joseph was killed. Sadly. But it was his brothers that took him away from, from his dad because of jealousy. And because Joseph was talking a little bit too much too, but that's another matter. So his brothers were never, they never, they never told his dad the truth about all this. So some years later, Joseph, after going through prison and difficulties, he found grace at Pharaoh's and Potiphar's eyes after going through Potiphar's wife and all that. And he became prime minister of Egypt and Potiphar and Pharaoh loved him. They really enjoyed having him as a prime minister, as the head of like Joseph was just, I think he was up after Pharaoh. He went from after Potiphar to after Pharaoh. So when the drought started, because we know that there were seven years of drought where nothing could grow, that there was no water, no food. But Joseph, as a good, followed the Holy Spirit and became the best project manager that, that the Bible ever talked about. So he had put stuff together. He was a store manager, project manager, storehouse manager. He made sure that for seven years, he calculated, he used, math, like I remember Reverend Paulette talking about how he used mathematics. He used different polit. He had a lot of knowledge that he put together in order to know that, okay, for seven years, God revealed me, but for seven years, I need to be ready. And he was ready. So some years later, when the drought started, his brothers, not aware of all that had happened, not aware that that was Joseph, that came up. I think they were not aware, I'm not, but I think they were not aware. They were not aware, or they were, but I believe they were not. They came to the palace to ask for some food. And at that, that time, reconciliation happened, but before that, there was a little time of friction, of course, because you know, human beings happen to be human beings. So when Joseph died, Joseph's brother thought, sorry, when Jacob died, I'm sorry, Joseph's brother thought that he would be a vindicative person, you know, that he would be like, you did this to me, you did this to me, you would not be, you not eat and all that. The only reason, you know, they, they thought that the only reason that why Jacob was like, why Joseph was like that, sorry, was because Israel, Jacob was still alive. So they wrote down something and they sent messengers with like Jacob's will. And the word of God says, the, the word that they sent says, I beg you, um, sorry, the word that they sent that is supposed to be from Jacob, we're not sure it was from Jacob, but the bubbles is not clear about it too. That word say that Jacob said, as a will, I beg you, please forgive the trespass of your brothers. And I believe he will have said it because he's a father of heart with a good heart. Please forgive the trespass of your brothers and their sin, for they did evil to you. Now, please forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of your father. And Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Genesis 50, verse 17. So based on that, Joseph's answer was, do not be afraid, for I am in the um, for am I in the place of God? Verse 20, Joseph answered, his answer continues, he said, But as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is this day, to save many people's lives. Verse 21, his answer continues. He said, now, therefore, do not be afraid. I'll provide for you and your little ones and your children. And 
he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. In other words, this scripture was used coming from a place of forgiveness from Joseph to his brothers. Joseph here is not trying to seek vengeance from his brothers or to accuse them, as we use this scripture for sometimes. But here he's practicing and exercising forgiveness. Amen. This verse has been simplified now into what the enemy meant for evil God has turned it around for my good. When it even, it's more than that. We forgot the essence of it, which is the brotherhood, the love for each other, and the forgiveness. The fact that we let bygones be bygones. That's the, ens the essence of this verse normally. Letting bygones be bygones. Laisser le passé être le passé. Whatever they did against Joseph several years ago, God used it to train him to become the great man that he, is, that he has been at that time. And that he's still now because we're still talking about him. And Joseph understood that. So he said in verse 20, do not be afraid, for am I in the place of God? He understood that. So if we have to transcribe and translate what he's saying in a simpler, in a, a simpler English, if you want, he's basically saying, I know you meant this to hurt me at, the, at first, but you helped me to get where God wanted me to be. That's what he's trying to tell his brother. So I forgive you. Not only because my father Israel asked me to, but because I have God's heart in me. So that's what he was trying to tell me. So that's what he said in verse 21. Now, therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for your little ones and you. For you and your little ones, or you and your children in some version, or you and your family in some versions, or you and your descendants. And he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. This verse 21 speaks about three things that he did that are very, very important. First, he said, he provided for them. Amen. Yes, he did. Secondly, he comforted them. Third, he spoke kindly to them. Amen. Now let's go back a little bit to verse 20. Oh, I will repeat this first. The three things that Joseph did in verse 21, no matter what they said or they did, Joseph provided for his brothers. He comforted them because daddy was not there anymore. He, he didn't take the place of the big brother, but he, he was like a big brother figure for them. It took a little bit that responsibility of big brother because Ruben couldn't I think it was Ruben. Yeah. No, that it wasn't Ruben. I need to check that, to double check that. If you know, please correct me. Um, so he provided for them, he comforted them and he spoke kindly to them. So now let's go back to verse 20. That says this, in order to bring about as it is this day to save many people alive, to save many people's lives, another version would say. Joseph here is saying that God accepted that he went through all those situations to save many people's lives. Amen. To save many people's lives. So Joseph is accepting here that all those things that happened were for God to save many people's lives. Hallelujah. And guess what? Among these many people, there are his brothers and his father's sons. Yes. Among those many people, all his father's household is counted. So Joseph, all that he went through was to save even those people who did something wrong to him. That's what this verse is showing us. So he's conscious that what they did was wrong. And they know that they did wrong because in verse 15, when Joseph's brother 
saw that their father was dead, they said, perhaps Joseph will hate us and may actually repay us for all the evil which we did him, which we did to him. So that's why that's when they send the messenger before uh, 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 to, to tell Joseph what their father did, what their father said before he died. So Joseph knew that it was wrong. They hurt him because he's a human being. They hurt him, of course. But he accepted to forgive them. So after God did his part and turned all those difficulties, as we now say, he turned it into a good, into a great victory, into great victories. What we need to do like Joseph, after God turned whatever the enemy meant for evil for our good, what we need to do is to forgive those human beings that were used by the enemy to hurt us. And we must care about their soul salvation. Yes. Look at what Joseph did. He forgave them. But more than that, he provided for them. He comforted them. And he kindly spoke to them. You, we will see later in this teaching that he... It doesn't mean that he wasn't angry. At the beginning, when they came, what he did, he put them in jail. He gave conditions. Ah! But at that point, he understood that my father didn't raise me like that. And the heart of God that I have inside me shouldn't be hateful, hateful like that. He spoke kindly to them. Those, those three things that he did, providing, comforting, or reassuring, and speaking kindly to them, they are testimonies of his love for God, yes, but of God's love for others too. He was a, he, he, what he did was a testimony of God's love. I may be saying that and you're like, why would I need to do that? But let me tell you what. Until now, I know that I have rough time forgiving what happened four or five years ago. I'm working on it to get better at it. Why? Because it's the only way my family will be saved. And let me tell you the truth of all this. My dad called me three weeks ago or one month ago and he said, son, I need your help. I need deliverance. I was shocked. But what God is explaining to me is that the fact that I started to speak to him regularly be nice to him, lovely, give him gift, broke something. I remember I, I gave two gifts to my father. I offered him cufflinks and a champagne bottle, an expensive one. I went and I bought it. My brothers looked at me like, I'm, I was, the Lord just said, do it. And I did it. And a few months later, my dad comes back and said, son, I need your help. Because in my heart, I'm looking and I'm searching for that forgiveness and apply it as God says. So you're going to ask me, why do I need to do that? I'm going to answer because we are chosen to do that. Because we have a mandate to save people, even though they did something wrong. We have a mandate to understand that God turns things around for good. Yes, but the other part of that verse says that it has to be that a lot of lives, many lives should be saved. And in those many lives, there are the lives of the people who did wrong to us when we were younger. People who did wrong to us earlier in our lives. Hallelujah. Somebody getting it. So why should I do that? Because I am chosen. Because I have a mandate. And here are three elements of this mandate that we, we shouldn't, we must not forget. Isaiah chapter four, the first element is found in Isaiah chapter 42, verse six, it is written, I, the Lord, have called you for a, for a righteous purpose. A righteous purpose. And I will take hold of your hand. I'll keep you and appoint you to be a covenant for the people and a light to the nations. Oh, mm, my God. Shabros. The Lord is putting a, a heavy weight, heavy load. But that heavy load is so light because the yoke of the light is, you know, the yoke of the Lord is light, easy to bear. Not easy to bear, but light. 
when we stay under him. So first, we have been called by God, but this verse will say to be a covenant for the people. Hallelujah. When we talk about the people, there is no discrimination there. Meaning that even those who did something wrong to use, to sorry, to us, are beneficiaries of God's calling in our lives because we were called for the people. And not other people who say we were called for nations. Nations mean the people. Nations doesn't mean I'm going to go to a country. I don't care about those people. I just want the country to be blessed, to bless me. That's wrong. You go to nations, you go to people. Hallelujah. God didn't just mean what they did wrong for good. What did it, God didn't just mean uh, uh, to change what they did wrong for good. Amen. Because the Bible doesn't say for my good. If you realize, we always say for what the enemy meant for evil, God, God had turned around for my good. It's wrong. The Bible doesn't say for our good. The Bible says it is written in the word of God for good. God turned it around for good. God is the only one who does everything good. Amen. God changed it into good for us to care for them in his name. God did not come to make uh, situations like that great victories for us not to be caring about him. He made it for us to care about he, others in his name, for us to do good to others. That's why even if they hurt us, Joseph is setting an example. Forgive. You have an, your, your calling, your, your, your mission is to save lives. It's not to hate people. Joseph was doing that for an entire empire of Egypt. But guess what? His family wasn't, he, God wasn't done with that one yet. That's why the Bible's ended. You see, Genesis, the beginning of the Bible, ends with Joseph's family. Hallelujah. The beginning ends with Joseph's family. So the forgiveness of his family is what will and will start the rest of the Bible. Mm. Imagine if Joseph had not forgiven his family, what the Bible would have been looking like after. Ooh. The second thing that we have to understand that is our mandate is in Matthew. 5 verse 14, it is written, you are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. It's written, we will be seen. We have to understand that we will be seen. Our works will be seen. We will have to meet those people. Those people who did something wrong to us, we will have to meet them one day. Yes, we will. We will have to meet them. Remember, I have somebody, there's somebody I had the grudge against for one year and a half. But when I went to friends, I was like, God, I don't want to meet that. I don't want to meet that person. But funny, fun fact, the Lord sent me to that person's church because that's where the anointing I needed to get was. <laughs> But before that, he had healed my heart a little bit more. But he sent me there. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. We are alike. So we must be, we will be seen. Our mandate is to be seen as a light. Not to be seen with pride, but to be a light. Joseph was a public personality and he had to meet his brothers. Even years after, he had to because he was a public personality. He was prime minister. People knew him. And for sure, knowing that the territory on which his brother Goshen were, were was a territory, sorry, 
that it wasn't Goshen. The territory in which his on which his brother and his father was, was under the Egyptian empire, knowing that he had to meet them at a certain point. Genesis chapter 42. If you read that, you will see that Joseph was angry against his brother and almost sinned against them. He put them in prison, stuff like that. But God's heart inside him took over. It started without God. When Joseph's brother came back, it started without God at the beginning. Amen. But it ended with the light that can't be hidden. The love and the compassion he had in his heart couldn't be hidden. So he finished by saying, chapter 42, verse 25, restore every man's money to his side because he had taken everything from them, put them in jail. He said, restore every man's money to his sack and give them provision for the journey. Thus he did for them. That's what he did for them. Even if we try to be mean to those people that hurt us before, and I'm speaking to myself because when I was writing it, I was seeing myself so bad. Now saying, God, can I teach you to say, that's what you have to teach. And it teaches me first. I was asking God, make me small. Because I want to understand it for myself too. Even if we try to be mean to those people, we are the one we will try. We will find ourselves weeping and crying like Joseph. Because Joseph cried when all that happened. At the beginning, he cried. The Bible says in chapter 42, he cried, he wept. For God will convict us of our sin if we try to be mean to them. Amen. God will convict us of sin. On mandate, the third part is to be. It's in Genesis 12, verse 2. I will make you a great into a great nation and I will bless you. That's really funny. It's one of the lyrics of the new single I say yes. And I will make your name great and you'll be a blessing. Here's something. God has called us to be a blessing to all nations. He made us great nations. Yes, but to be a blessing to all nations without discrimination, with wisdom, but without discrimination. Let me explain why wisdom, because sometimes you don't need to be close, too close to everybody. It's just you need to be a blessing, love them. If we are called, it's to be a blessing, not a curse to people that God loves. Amen. God's love is not interested but it is full of wisdom. And we must be ready to say, yes, God, you turned it around for my good, but I'm ready to forgive those people who did wrong. I'm ready to forgive those people who were part of the way you turned around, the way part of what caused you to turn things around for my good. Because if God turned it around for good, it means it was bad at the beginning. So who are those people who did bad to you, to us? I know who they are for me, but do you know who they are for you? Apply wisdom. Forgive them. You want God to bless? Forgive. You want God to save them? Forgive. Care for them. Care for their salvation of their souls. Provide for them if you can. If you, if God, you know, provide. Not even if God puts it in your heart. Provide when you can for them. Comfort them. Reassure them. Do not be so mean that even if they, they even if they, they, there's a human being that there's somebody close to them that is dead, you don't care. Care for them, but do it full of wisdom, of God's wisdom, not human being, not human being wisdom. Amen. That's the end of my teaching. May God bless us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody has been blessed. Does somebody have any question? Anything he wants to add, a comment? Amen. Anybody has a question, something he wants to add? Nothing? Anybody has, you know, a comment? Okay.
la manera que tú se comporta a veces. On va ce qui nous ont une face. Merci, Maman. Merci. Nobody else have a question or a comment? If not, that's the end of the teaching. We're just going to listen to that song again and realize really what those lyrics mean now. Because God turned it around for a good, yes. But are we ready to forgive those who did bad before? Because as we say, for God to turn it for good, it means it was bad before. Amen. Hallelujah. So, so let's, let's sing this song together again. What the enemy meant for evil, God has turned it around. For a spirit of heaviness, he gives us a garment of praise. Mm -hmm. But I want you to know, regardless that whatever mm -hmm. the enemy meant for evil, God is turning it around for good. Yeah. Are you ready? What the enemy Be meant for evil, God has turned That's it right. around. Turn it around. What the enemy meant for evil, God has turned it around for my. How many of you have that testimony? Come on, a strip say. For you, it's really amazing for you, God, but you turned it around. You turned it around for me to be able to be a peaceful person. Somebody who can go ahead and do your work to stay made life. If I were you, I'll stand singing this song. Oh, God, has turned it's a declaration of faith for my life. What the enemy meant for God has turned it around. In my office. He turned it around. In my office. What the enemy meant for me. My God. God has turned it around for oh, my God. What the enemy meant for me. My God. God has turned it around for me. Open your mouth and prophesy. God has turned it around it turned it around what the end the end for me God has turned it around for me I have a baba but whatever it meant for evil you turned it around turn it around again turn it around turn my heart around if the situation was turned around, around, then my heart wasn't broke by the time. He has turned it around. What the enemy meant for pain, God has turned it around for my good. What the enemy meant for evil, turned it around. Yeah. 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 She 
personally and ask God, talk, God, turn my heart around. Turn this situation around. Give me the strength to forgive them. Yes. All those people, give me the strength to forgive them. But I turn my situation. Yes. Turn my heart around, please. I need that help. Oh, from you. I need that help from you. I need that oh, help. From you. Please turn my heart around. Oh, please. Please turn it around. My heart needs that help. I need that help from you. Please turn those things around, Father. Please do turn it around. 
What did I learn? I know sometimes I did not forgive. I know I still have grudges. I need your help. I need your help. I need your help. I need your help. help me please please help us help us in this ministry to remove the grudges to remove them we need your help amen and the spirit of grudges is removed in today in the name of jesus it has been in the lord said that it has been removed i heard i heard him saying that Grudging spirit, grudging spirit is removed in the name of Jesus Christ. Now I want to pray for that family, that little, that's like Joseph's family. A family in which there is a problem between brothers and sisters, a problem between siblings, parents, uncles, aunts. I want to pray for that family. Father, I pray that the hearts change in that family. Let the hearts change in that family. Let the hearts change in that family. Family with grudges, let your heart, let the hearts change in you. Let the heart change in you. Let the hearts change. Let them be moved and changed by the Holy Spirit, by the love of God. Let the hearts change. Father, we pour out your love in those hearts. In that family in which the drudges are all around. We pour out your love. We pour out your love. Receive healing. Family, receive healing of your heart and soul. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I pray for this session. I pray for understanding. For grace to understand. Grace to see. Grace to receive more. Thank you for your grace. I cover this with the blood of Jesus and I pray that this shall not go into empty vessels. But it shall go into vessels that understand you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. If there's no question, no comment, you have a good night. May God bless you. Thank you. Amen.